yesterday I got an email from a friend of mine and he was talking about turning between centers and I was wondering could I make a bushing that would be you know bushings that would turn between dead centers or live center whatever the case would be you put your dead center in this one and live center in this one anyway I think you know what I'm talking about so I've been thinking well I don't know if my centering bits are going to be the exact same angle as the dead center that would be here or here and by the way I don't really have a proper dead center to go in here uh, so uh, this is my best mandrel by the way uh, I don't think I've bent it I think it's still in good shape and uh, what I would want to do is I'd want to be able to have my taper nice the way the Morse taper is you, you notice how you, you put them in and you don't even have to press very hard and there's absolutely no play in other words it's touching all the way along so anyway I think you know what I'm getting at oh by the way these are uh, the uh, Sierra bushings and tubes very very common I like it I turn it a lot now this doesn't have to be real tight just a little bit tight I will check for play here I mean that's the whole idea of turning between centers is you don't have the you know don't have play let's just check it out and see what we got Okay, just eyeballing it like this, it looks pretty close as it is. Uh, let's move in a little closer here. Well, we're only turning about 200 RPM here. But, um, like I said, that's pretty good. I don't know if I need to uh, worry about turning on centers to improve on that, at least for myself. Let's just maybe speed it up here a little bit and see if we can make our... Uh, tool jump up and down. Okay, there's 600 RPM. You know, that's plenty good enough for me. However, just for the fun of it, I want to see if I can actually uh, make one of those bushings. Now this piece here, I can't remember why it was I thought I needed it, or if I was just practicing or what, but rather than cut off a new piece of uh, brass here, I may as well use this. And I'll just make the taper in the end here, and that'll tell me right away if this is going to work or not. Now I know I've mentioned this before, but there's one thing that I really miss on this lathe that the wood lathe has, and that is on the other end, there's no hand crank here. So if I want to make sure everything's okay, I gotta go like this, which is no hardship, but sometimes this is kind of greasy. Anyway, I'm pretty sure everything's okay. 
and make sure that my automatic feed lever is not engaged. And then here we go. Okay, obviously the bit is smaller than the piece of brass tube there. Uh, and so I want to be careful that I don't bury the taper into the end because then it's going to, you know, the test is not going to be accurate. Um, I think you know what I'm trying to say here. So I'm not going to go all the way in, in other words. Well, you can see this did not turn out as planned. I got this about as tight as I can do it by hand here. I'll try it again. Okay, I've uh, flipped a bit around. Surely it didn't dull it already. But anyway, this is brass. I mean, it should just sink right into it. I have never had a problem like this before when drilling into the end of a brass rod. Normally, you could almost hold the bit with your fingers, it goes so easy. I wish I had an expert standing behind me then to say, this is why it's not working. Well, a couple of hours has gone by here now. And I've been thinking a lot about this. Never had this happen before. Um, you know, I entertained the idea that, well, possibly you're not supposed to put oil on the cutter when you're doing brass. But that doesn't make any sense because all the oil does is it cools the bit. It doesn't prevent, you know, it doesn't prevent, make it lubricated so it won't, you know, cut. I think you get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's have a look at this and see if the taper here will match this. I guess I better clean that out a little bit first. Now, the reason I'm showing you this before I forget, when I was turning the Emperor kit a few months ago, I had to make up my own barrel trimmer shaft because you couldn't buy shafts large enough for those humongous brass tubes. And when I drilled the hole down through this, it went so easy that I was moving the uh, tailstock in and out by hand. I mean, that's how easy it was pushing in. Um, yeah, I just can't figure it out. Okay, this is actually the first time I'm trying this. You get to see it along with me. This is the uh, live center that goes with my uh, wood lathe. It's a pretty good quality one. I, th I think there's two bearings, I'm not sure. It's, it seems to be uh, uh, pretty free from play, although I kind of feel something. Anyway, let's give it a try here. No. 
I can tell that the uh, the uh, point end of it is going back and forth in there. Well, as long as it's going to be, you know, wrong, it's wrong in the right direction. You know, I, I would sooner have it grabbing down here than the point writing in there and not allowing this to touch, if you know what I'm getting at. However, let's try the other one. This is the one that comes with this lathe. No, it's exactly the same. Okay. So in other words, the uh, camper on the uh, bit here is not the same as these. It's a little bit different. Well, that was a thought. However, I'm going to show you something that uh, uh, my friend pointed out to me. It's something that I knew, but he's going to be ordering one for himself. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know that they exist. But it's the next best thing. Well, this is it, and I imagine that probably some of you guys already got this. Um, it's not completely new to me. I did see it before, but I never thought of actually trying it out. However, my friend is going to order one, and uh, he's going to try it out and let me know what he thinks. If he thinks it's uh, much improvement, then I'll get one and uh, slip my macro lens on and get in nice and close, and we'll have a look-see, and I'll be able to show you. However, we're just going to have to wait and see what he says. In the meantime, I'm going to be starting another series. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it rhymes with, um... Uh, let's see, no, what's, what rhymes with segmented ball? Segmented ball. Uh, am I talking out loud again? Oh, darn. Well, I guess I gave it away. Yeah, it's going to be a segmented ball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of max out my lathe. I've always wanted to see what is the largest diameter segmented ball I can make. Um, I know it's not going to be as long as I can make because then it'll look like some sort of urn that you would see in a museum that holds a small person. But I want to see what is the largest diameter segmented ball I can turn. That'll be the next one. And all being well, it's going to start tomorrow. So um, thanks for watching.